This is, conference will now be uh, recorded. The proceedings are now called to order on agenda item number three, quasi-judicial hearing to consider the administrative variant request for 6073 Old Ocean Boulevard. Uh, town Clerk, could you read the agenda item title? I'm going to do the roll call first, if that's okay. Sure. Okay. Vice Chair Hendon? Present. Member Slow? Present. Member Solly? Present. And Chair Cody and mem Member Bingham and Cassidy are absent from notice. Uh, could you stand for the Pledge of Allegiance? Pledge of Allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Today we're discussing an application submitted by Todd Pappas, 6073 Old Ocean Boulevard, Ocean Ridge, Florida, 33435, requesting variances from the provisions of the Land Development Code, Chapter 64, Zoning Article 1, District Regulations, six, Section 64-1K1A, 64-1K1B, and Section 64-1K2B, RSC Single Family Residential Districts. Chapter 67, Buildings and Building Regulations, Article 2, Coastal Construction, Section 67-17G, and Section 67-18A for a new two-story with lower-level standard family residence, including demolition of the entire structure except a portion of the exterior garage wall on a lot 78.87 feet wide, not 100 feet wide as required, and with a total area of 14,057 square feet not 20,000 square feet as required, to allow a side setback of 7.94 feet, not 15 foot as required, to allow an, all of the lot areas to be considered in determining lot size and usable lot area, not limited to 1,979 CCC, I'm sorry, 1979 CCCL as required, and to allow construction of a portion of the residence and pool seaward of the 1979 Coastal Construction Control Line, not limited to the 1979 CCCL. For the property located at 6073 Old Ocean Boulevard, property control number 46-43-45-27-08-004-0031, or legally described as the south half of Lot 3 and all of Lot 4 and Lot 4 of amended plat of part of Boyden subdivision, Exactly the description located at the town office. Thank you. At this time, any ex parte communication should be either disclosed by identifying the subject of the communication and the identity of the person, group, or entity with whom the communications took place, or any correspondence be provided to the town clerk and made part of the public record. In addition, each member of the board may identify the existence of any investigations or site visits he or she has conducted or any expert opinions received and disclose any conflicts of interest in this matter. I drove by the property and stopped and looked at the proximity of the two neighbors and but never got out of my car. Okay, thank you. Nick? I had no discussion with anyone. Yeah. Uh, I myself uh, drove by the property as well to, to look at the external um, conditions uh, from the front side only. I did not right. approach it from the beach side. Okay. We will then proceed with the hearing on this matter. Will the town clerk please swear in the witnesses? Will she just speak on the item please stay and raise your right hand? When you come forward, please state your name and address clearly for the record and whether or not you have been sworn in. Okay. The town staff will now make its presentation on this matter. 
Good morning, Chair, Board Members, Corey O'Gorman, Town Planner. Um, as the clerk indicated, this is a variance uh, for uh, construction of a new two-story home at 6073 Old Ocean. Uh, the variances include a request to uh, section 64.1 and 67 uh, to uh, adjust the requirements of the RSF, uh, RSE rather, zoning district, as well as the requirements regarding the coastal construction control line. Uh, the staff report provides background uh, that the applicant had submitted a request for development plan review in April of this year. Uh, it, it was determined at the time uh, that the project didn't consider the coastal construction requirements for setback from the 1979 line, uh, nor did it consider the uh, requirements for uh, determining usable lot area uh, for calculating floor area ratio or lot coverage, uh, where the code in Chapter 67 uh, limits properties that from the ocean uh, and that uh, are impacted by the 1979 coastal construction line only calculate that portion of the lot area that is landward of the coastal construction line. Uh, it was also determined that uh, during the development plan review, the property had been split from the parcel to the west of Old Ocean in the late 90s uh, without approval from the town, contrary to the town uh, code requirements. And as such, the property is no longer a legal lot of record. Uh, as a result, um, and in order to move forward with the project as designed, uh, the applicant has submitted the variance applications uh, that you're considering this morning. Uh, there are five variances. Uh, variance number one is as indicated in the applicant's justification statement uh, is for minimum lot width. Um, and as indicated by the, the town clerk, this is a request to reduce the lot width from the 100 foot requirement of the RSE district to 78.87 feet. Uh, variance number two is for minimum lot area, uh, reducing the minimum requirement from 20,000 square feet for the RSE district uh, to the 14,057 square feet. Uh, variance three is regarding area taken into consideration for determination of lot size and usable land area uh, to allow inclusion of the area line between the, the high water line and the coastal construction line um, and enabling calculation of the gross lot area uh, for purposes of, of determining the lot coverage and the floor area ratio. Uh, variance number four is for construction seaward of the coastal construction control line. Uh, the uh, code requires that the 1979 coastal construction line be utilized as the setback line uh, for all properties uh, that are oceanfront. Uh, and this request uh, would uh, ask to enable the uh, site improvements, including the swimming pool and outdoor living area, as well as some of the air conditioned space of the home to be located seaward of the 1979 coastal construction line. Uh, variance number five um, is for the interior side setback uh, to allow the um, existing exterior wall of the garage on the existing home to be retained and included in the design and construction of the proposed home uh, and would allow a setback of 7.94 feet rather than the 15 feet that's required by uh, the RSE zoning district. Uh, the staff report provides some additional background regarding other properties in the area, their lot area, floor area ratio, and date of, of uh, home construction based on property appraiser information. Um, and would note that none of the lots in this area uh, meet the minimum lot size requirement or lot width requirement uh, with the exception of, of one property located at 6017 Old Ocean. Uh, <coughs> the staff report goes on to um, outline the minimum requirements that must be met in order for variances to be granted and, and for the Board of Adjustments to take action. Um, the staff report also provides analysis of each uh, each of the five variance applications uh, regarding the criteria for granting a variance, 
The staff report also provides analysis regarding the applicant's justification statement for each of the five variances. The staff finds that none of the five variances meet the strict requirements for issuance of the variance for any of the five applications or any of the five requests. And the staff recommendation is for denial of all five of the applications or all five of the variance requests. I would note that there is typographical error in the recommendation section of the staff report that indicates recommendation for approval with conditions. That is not correct. To be clear, the staff recommendation is for denial of all five requests for variance. We'd be happy to answer any questions, and that concludes our summary of the report. Thank you. The applicant will now make its presentation on the matter. Good morning. There you go. When it's red. Red. Good morning. My name is Matthew Scott. I am the zoning attorney for the law firm of the name of Scullin Backman, an address of 14 Southeast 4th Street, Boca Raton. I have been sworn in. I'm here on behalf of the applicant, Todd Pappas. We also have our project architect, which will get up in a moment and introduce himself. Thank you to staff for your staff report. If it's okay with the board, we'd like to run through a presentation quickly to show you some of the images and explain some of the issues a little further. So with that being said, are you able to see? Do you have the screens in front of you? Yes. Great. Okay, so the property is located at 6073 Old Ocean Boulevard. Here is an area of some perspective. I just want to call out that on the east side or the right side of your screen, you'll see that there's a new seawall that was there. That was installed a few years ago, and I believe the town had the property owners to the seawall. Now here's another aerial, just to give you an idea of if you're unfamiliar, but I'm sure you all are, with Old Ocean Boulevard. Some of the homes there, as staff said, are particularly old, but quite a few have been redeveloped. The history on that's a little sort of mixed. So some of the homes have been rebuilt, but staff's report has no record of that, meaning they were rebuilt somehow, I don't know, with your building permit process or what. And then to the west of my client's property is a vacant site that is, I believe, in for permitting for redevelopment. Now I'm standing the fact that that site also doesn't meet the minimum lot width for area. So as we're going to explain in our presentation, there's sort of a lot going on from a zoning and development perspective and from a historical construction perspective on this roadway. As many, as you may know, Old Ocean has some challenges as far as width and traffic and conflicts between vehicles and pedestrians. It's an older road, and some of the homes over the years were built in a way that they were allowed to sort of essentially encroach on the front setback, creating a challenging access issue there. As staff said, just to reiterate, the zoning is RIC. It's essentially a state home zoning. And so it's a unique situation because the minimum lot size, minimum lot width is higher for every single lot in the zoning district when none of them meet that. And so how does this happen? How does it happen that none of the lots other than one meet these requirements, but yet we're seeing redevelopment of them? And as I'm going to explain, it's because your code allows for older lots, lots of record, to essentially be grandfathered in, allowing for the redevelopment without full compliance with code. Again, just to sort of help set the stage here, here's an image, a street view of Old Ocean and just how constrained it is. And then here are some existing conditions. And so before getting too far into the existing conditions, I'd like to have the architect come up and sort of run through some of that. Yes, Randall Stoft, Randall Stoft Architects, 42 North Swinton Avenue, Delray Beach. I am sworn in. So 
Randy, if you just want to take them through the existing home a little bit and some of the challenges with the with the home. Sure. Let me. Um, so uh, I have to speak on it as far as more of an architectural standpoint than than that. Obviously, being the attorney. Um, I want to tell you a little bit about this site. Uh, I don't know if you guys all know me, but I've done, I think, more oceanfront houses in Ocean Ridge than anybody here, uh, any other architect for sure. Um, when Todd, uh, Todd lives in the Tamarind, he's been there 20 years. I lived there, I was his neighbor for 10 years. Uh, he called me and said, hey, I, there's, I don't, I don't, I have a 3,500 square foot condo in the Tamarind. I want to build a, a modest house and I have this lot. Let's look at it. So we looked at the lot. Obviously, we had no idea of this new criteria, but I said, well, every house that's calculated in the town is 36%. That's how it works. On the ocean, it's always 36% up to the high water mark. And the rear setback is set by the state. So we got the coastal engineer out there. We got the, uh, you know, Caulfield Wheeler. Every other, every other oceanfront house has calculated the ratio to the high water mark. There is not, and by the way, they, I brought the one I did in 18, two doors down calculated from the high water mark and the setback was mandated by the state so we obviously did our conceptuals based on the 36 percent but not only did we 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 actually only went to 34 percent less than what every other house built on the ocean and every other house built in ocean ridge by the way we meet all the new setbacks the 25 the 15 sides we are not asking for anything here other than the fact that this is now a unbuildable lot. And, it, and it's, it was interesting when I was on the phone with the city attorney and she said, well, they just don't want a gargantuan house here. This is, this is a 4,200 4, square foot AC house. It's 49 feet wide. We only have 60% ratio on the on the second floor versus 75%. We have the second floor more towards the middle, so it's great for our neighbors. We've allowed us for a two-car garage to get parking off the street, and obviously we're on you know we're on the beach. We you don't want cars to sit out and rot and. The beat. So we not only are we able to get two cars in a garage as opposed to cars parked up all over that tight street, but we're able to have guests actually pull in a driveway there. So it's a win-win for the town. Everything we've done here, um, and then there, they were throwing out, "Oh, you can renovate this house." This this house is not a renovation candidate. This is this is so far gone. Rebar, it's it's falling apart, and and it would never fall under the legal 50% rule of renovation. So anybody throwing that out just doesn't know what they're talking about here. This is, like I said, this is, this is a very modest house. We have a complete streetscape. Remember, seven of eight of these houses are already two-story houses. Granted, there are, there are big nits of architectural styles and mansard roofs. And, um, but and but the house next door is the oldest house in Ocean Ridge, and it's not a renovatable candidate. We've been very careful to design a house that has single-story elements on the side, two-story in the middle, meet all the ratios that every single person in Ocean Ridge has built um, since I've been doing work here 35 years, and I've done a lot of houses, big and small. So it sounds like we're asking for something, but we are not. We completely designed this house to be sensitive and contextual to the area. Not a, not, we're not asking for a setback. We're not asking for a height. We're not asking for a ratio. We are asking for a guy that just paid millions of dollars for this site to be able to build what anybody else has done in this area, even a little less. And then I hear this side, well, you know, we'll throw you a bone. You maybe we'll let you renovate this. You can't renovate this, or maybe we'll let you put in addition. 
this is not a candidate for that. This is a falling apart 60 year old structure that was not built well in the first place. So that that's nonsense. We are not, I don't feel like we're, we are asking for anything. I don't know where these inserts came from. I actually brought the plan that was approved in 18, two doors down that I renovated for the Zessons. And I will show you that that was calculated from the high water mark and every other house I've done there. And the setback is set, set by the same coastal engineer that set all those setbacks. Every one of those houses is across the coastal construction line. So what staff is saying, I, I'm just, I, I'm, I'm flabbergasted. It's like a taking of the guy's property. Thank you. Okay, thank you for that. Um, so as you can tell, this, the issues that we've encountered came as a big surprise to our project architect and my client. And um, just to kind of go into a little more detail um, about some of the issues with the property. So your staff report says that my client would be permitted to renovate the home. It's of course something to be explored when we encounter these issues. The inspection report, the images you see on your screen show that as is common with really old homes on the beach, um, there's so much wear to it from sea air, from age, that some of the concrete is actually falling off of the home. Uh, we have some of the concrete that fell in, in our car if you wanted to show us. Uh, the rebar is exposed, there's mold throughout, there's termite infestation. And so that, that may be the case that um, some of the homes could renovate in place. But in this situation, our, our architect, who's an expert in this, said it'd be impossible. Our inspector looked at it and said, it, you, it would, as you would start remodeling under your code, it would lead to an entire teardown because of the state of the home. And so with that being the case, effectively, if we aren't able to obtain these variances today, this renders my client's property unbuildable. A piece of property for which he pays property taxes um, could build nothing on it. Not any sort of new home. It would just be able to keep a home that is literally falling to the ground. And then it, when it falls or when it um, is you know, rendered uninhabitable, right? It would just be an unbuildable lot that nothing could be done on. So this is a um, obviously a precarious position. And so um, jumping ahead to <clears throat> excuse me, let me get the, the history. And so I want to go back to the history and explain this a little more because um, as a zoning attorney, this is a very unique situation to encounter something like this. As I said earlier, your code permits old grandfathered lots, lots of record prior to 1976, or 79, I should say, to rebuild in place. So as an example, if this was a lot of record, my client would be able to rebuild within the general parameters where they are now, even if that exceeds the coastal construction line. This is evidenced by the fact, as the architect said a moment ago, two doors down, someone rebuilt extensively into this coastal construction line, expanding their home. And so if this were a lot of record, we wouldn't be here, we wouldn't be having these challenges that we're having today. But, and so of course my client bought the property and proceeded as, as one would expect, seeing this redevelopment and saying they'd like to build a nice home to improve the street and um, you know, sort of uh, my client's final home. Staff discovered that in 1996, a prior owner, not my client, a prior owner sold off the West lot without getting town approval. Effectively vitiating, destroying this, this special lot of record condition this grandfather status. And it's not something that's easily discoverable, right? Because every lot on the street is too small. The difference is what makes this a unique situation, what makes this something that warrants these variances, is that the other lots are lots of record. They're grandfather lots. So your staff report um, goes on, you know, mentions quite a few times that this lot is 14,000 square feet, and all the other lots are under 20,000 square feet as well. So there's no, nothing unique about my client's site. But what staff misses, where the staff report misses in a big way is, those are grandfathered lots. They can rebuild where they are, as evidenced by the fact that others are doing it around my client's property. The issue here that makes this unique, that makes this a hardship, that makes this not something suffered by others in the area, the same zoning district, is that because of a mistake by someone 25 years ago, this is rendered an a, a unbuildable lot. 
And so that is a really, really important fact that, that we, we want to um, emphasize today in going through these variances. But we also think it's important to, uh, from a big picture perspective, talk about the benefits to the neighborhood and to the community as a whole. And so at the end of my presentation, I'm going to talk about the letters of support we were, were able to obtain from the neighbors, including the neighbors most affected directly to, to the north. We believe that the neighbors are supportive of this um, and that the town should be supportive of this variance request because first and foremost, the house is in, in, in very bad shape. As I said, it's falling apart. It has this encroachment into the front setback, so it doesn't create any space for vehicles. And so this redevelopment would allow for removal of an eyesore. Also, the new architecture, as I mean, we show the renderings, is a beautiful new home that fits in with the street and would be an improvement to the area. Perhaps most importantly, sort of from a public policy perspective, <laughs> the town gets calls all the time about vehicle issues on the street, uh, conflict between people walking on the street and big trucks, box trucks coming for deliveries or construction work, things of this nature. If these variances are approved and my client's able to redevelop the property, they'll be able to take four cars off the street, meaning my client will not be adding any more cars to this area and will help with a really challenging situation in this area of the, city, uh, of, of, of the town. And then, of course, it goes without saying is sort of an obvious one, but there would be an increase in property taxes if my client's able to take an old, dilapidated home and drastically improve it, improve it with a brand new home. Now, getting to the variance requests, uh, it's, it, of course, can seem in your staff report that my client is asking for a lot, asking for many variances. But as I said, it really boils down to one main issue. If this were a lot of record, we wouldn't need to be seeking this much relief. But because it's not a lot of record, like all the others on the block, it's stripped of any protections and must comply with every last bit of code. So we're seeking variances that, in essence, are the bare minimum to allow my client to rebuild a home on this site. So with the first one, the minimum lot width, it needs to be 100 feet. None of the homes have 100 feet of, of uh, width other than maybe one on this street. But they're grandfathered in. So as a result, we must seek relief from that. In this case, we're seeking the variance to allow for a lot width of 78, 77.8 feet. So it's marginally less than 100 feet required. And as um, shown in our plans, we'll again allow for construction of a reasonably sized home and scale of the neighborhood. Similarly, the minimum lot area, code requires 20,000 feet. No lots other than one are 20,000 square feet. And so the variance we're seeking, in essence, is to allow my client to have the grandfather status that all the other houses have, um, but he doesn't through no fault of his own. Next one is the lot size usable land area. Your code says that you can include um, areas in the coastal construction area in measuring how much of a home you can build. Again, if this were a grandfather lot, it wouldn't come into play. They'd be able to use what was already there. And so this, this again, fits into the overall concept of this grandfathering and issue we have. Um, the next one is the construction seaward, seaward of the coastal construction line. As I referenced earlier in the presentation, the town built a seawall in this coastal construction line area. There are many examples in the town of people building in this area and either doing it through a building permit process or variance process. We're seeking a variance because this has been identified as something that doesn't comply with the code, even though other things have been built in this area. As an example, the architect referenced um, two doors down. They built a brand new pool and a structure seaward of the coastal construction line because they had this, because I presume they had this grandfathered in status. And then the last variance is relative to the interior side yard setback on the north side. 15 feet is required, but there is an existing um, wall that goes below the ground. My client would like to maintain this side, side setback and has support from the neighbor that's affected to the north because this will allow them to build a larger garage and again, get more vehicles off the street. And so I'm going to run through the varying standards quickly uh, because those are the criteria, uh, but they can be a little bit uh, repetitive and um, take a little longer than we would all like to hear. These variance applications meet all of your criteria. The, um, there are clearly special conditions here, right? There's this issue that was no fault of my clients that makes this a very unique property on the street. The other, the other properties on the street have been able to rebuild, um, have been able to get permits, this is, this is a unique situation in that it's an unbuildable lot because of this mistake by someone else 20 years ago. 
And again, this rolls directly into the second one, not the actions of the applicant. My client had nothing to do with this mistake made 25 years ago. It was not a result of, of, of my client's actions. The next one, again, um, as I said, these can get a little repetitive. Granting this variance will not give my client a special privilege. In fact, it will allow my client to do what many others on the street and the town as a whole have done if they had this grandfathered in status or were able to get a permit um, through, through the town through other means. And then again, like I said before, it does get repetitive. If we go with the literal interpretation of the code, if no relief is given to my client here, this will deprive my client of the ability to rebuild a home whatsoever on this property for the end of time. Whenever the home that's there falls down, but has, as our architect shared, is uninhabitable currently. And so not giving these variances will literally deprive my client of a right enjoyed by every other property owner in the town. Again, five rolls in with four. This would be unnecessary and an undue hardship. This is because others have been able to do it. It's not causing a problem. And we have support from so many of the neighbors, meaning, okay. meaning denying the variances here would be an undue hardship on my client in light of the circumstances and the fact that the other that others in the street are supportive of, of us doing this. The next is that the variances granted are the minimum under the circumstances. Again, my client is not seeking to build some massive mansion. It's not seeking to exceed the height requirements allowed by code. It clearly uh, fits within the neighborhood as it's only an approximately 4,000 square foot home. Um, with regard to seven, the grant of the variance will be in harmony with the general intent and purpose of the code. Um, I believe that your code, this estate residential zoning, encourages maintenance of homes, rebuilding homes, improving neighborhoods. Allowing this variance will allow my client to drastically improve his property and the street as a whole. This is something that, that your coach should clearly want to foster. And then um, the last one is that the variance will not be injurious to the surrounding area. Um, I think it's fairly obvious that this would not have a negative impact on the neighborhood. In fact, it would have a positive impact. Um, with that being said, I, I hope the letters of support that we share with the clerk were in your backup. If not, I have copies of them. Um, this is a really big, important point to my client. He spent time speaking with a variety of the neighbors. We were able to obtain support from a lot of them, including the neighbor directly to the north. That there's a, a um, variety of letters of people saying, please let them do this. This is something that will benefit our area. This is something that will benefit Old Ocean. And um, they were urging um, this board to support the variances. So with that said, thank you for allowing me to go on so long. This is a pretty complicated one. And obviously, as you can imagine, incredibly important to my client. Um, so we respectfully request approval of the variances. I'm happy to answer any questions because I understand this is, can be a confusing application. Thank you. Uh, <clears throat> at this time, any other member of the public who wishes to submit relevant information to the board may come forward and speak for a maximum of three minutes each. Please indicate whether you are for or against the project or neither for or against the project. Thank you. <clears throat> Thank you. Good morning. Albert Richard Narr of 6107 and formerly of 6103 North Ocean Boulevard. My wife and I own the lot directly across from the subject property. For the record, let me read the description from the county records. The south one half of lot three and all of lot four and block nine of Boynton subdivision, according to the amended plat thereof on file in the office of the clerk of the circuit court in and for Palm Beach County, Florida and Platt Book 12, page 45. We are against this for obvious reasons. We are currently under contract with Bella Homes. We have a business relationship with Bella to build a two-story home. We have been working for almost a year with the town to get a permit to build a, a new home. 
We anticipate the building permit by the end of this year, if not sooner. Prior to doing this, we did our due diligence. We wanted to see if there, what the setbacks were, what the codes were, elevation, height restrictions, drainage. I have signed multiple applications for permits, including the CCCL, the town for septic. We've done everything we need to do. Uh, and working closely with our building inspector, our architect, we're on our third or fourth revision. We are currently ready to file again, another revision for the town's approval. We purchased our home at 6103 North Ocean Boulevard in February of 2010. The house is now 14 years old. Believe me, as a homeowner, I know what the ocean can do in the salt air to a home. We've lived it. When we realized that the lot next to us, adjacent to 6103 on the north side, was available prior to purchasing that lot, again, we did our due diligence. Making sure there were no covenants right-of-ways or restrictions in any way. We did surveys. After realizing that this was a buildable lot, we went ahead and purchased the lot from that owner. Old Ocean Boulevard, as you know, is a one-way street. It is 13 feet wide. Having lived there for 11 years, I will tell you, it has limited access. During the time that we lived there, we made our lot available to our neighbors, including parking for repair and service personnel, contractors, house guests, landscapers. The lot also has been used after Hurricane Sandy as a staging area for sand to redo the dunes. We allowed that to happen. It was our pleasure. We had a convoy of dump trucks coming in for over a week, dumping sand on the lot. And we had bobcats, two of them, working continuously to build up the dune. When we begin our construction, our construction entrance will be on A1A. All deliveries, including lumber, concrete, steel, all materials required when building a new home will be coming through A1A and not Old Ocean Boulevard. Our property, which is on Old Ocean Boulevard, the shoulder will allow for five pickup trucks parked diagonally off of Old Ocean Boulevard to um, do the work that's needed to build the, the home. During our time living on Old Ocean Boulevard, we've experienced the wear and tear being across from the ocean. We have replaced air conditioners at least twice, one of them a third time. Excuse me. Uh, comments are, should be held to three minutes. So I'll give you one additional minute to, to, to sum it up. Okay. One minute. Okay. In 2015, the home adjacent to the subject property, number 50, 6059, applied for a variance to extend the garage and the room over it. It was denied. You cannot go out of the footprint. The response was these homes are grandfathered. They're amongst the early homes when the town was founded. And that was all we needed to know that we could build an ocean view home. With all due respect to the board, if this application is approved, then we will come back in front of you and request a variance to build our home higher, similar to the home to the north of the lot, but not to exceed that height. 
Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Carr. Are you a, are you a lawyer? What is it? Don't hold it against me. <laughs> <laughs> he really likes lawyers. <laughs> uh, Terry Brown, Harvard Eye South. First of all, I oppose and support the staff report. I read it in detail and their justification for all five denials of the variance. And um, it, it, Mr. Nara's presentation was fantastic. I know him a long time. You, you should have let him go on and on. But, um, and the presentation from the applicant was well done. But it's a sob story. They want more. They want it. it, it this property owner loves this property so much that he's homesteading it even though he can't live there. Check the record. So there's something going on with the structure. Now the structure's in bad shape, but that's why you renovate and build. We have two houses on our street that were taken down to the slab and left up one wall, whatever the rule was, and they rebuilt two-story houses and they came out really well. And they were tented because they had termites. So this can be done. Um, you know, it's, it's something that someone wants more than the code will allow is basically, so it's no hardship. The hardship doesn't exist in that sense. Thank you very much. Thank you, Mr. Brown. Okay. Any attorneys in the house? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, don't hold it against me. Hi, everybody. Good morning, board. My name is Jonathan Blumen Freeling, located in Boca Raton, Florida. I represent um, one of the homeowners across the street. Uh, to me, I, I read the application and I also read uh, the board report and we are opposed uh, the grant of any variances for the five variances requested. Um, this to me is very simple. When I, when I listen to the, the um, attorney's uh, plea to the, to the board, it talks about two different things. One is that um, it's not a lot of record and therefore that's one issue. And two is the other issue with regards to a mistake made by somebody else 25 years ago, sort of that hardship argument. From a compassionate standpoint and a humanistic standpoint, I get it. I feel for the owner. I'm sorry that the owner purchased this property. Um, but those are not the legal requirements that are, need to be met to comply with the various co with the codes. In addition to that, um, I think if the board were to approve it, it would be going directly against what the code state. As a matter of fact, in the own report, it says, and the board under section 63-73b, it says to approve a variance, the board shall do the following and find the following, not may. That's a big difference. There's no room for interpretation. It means the board must strictly comply with the rules of the sections set forth in the actual code. To give the discretion to the board to do something different, I think it's going to open up a big problem for various other homeowners, future homeowners, current homeowners that didn't get the variance they required, and could be a determination whether it's selective enforcement or certain uh, deferential treatment prior to this particular owner seeking this variance. I think that would pose a huge issue, and that's what you have the town attorney for to advise you accordingly. Secondly, with regards to hardship issue, again, I'm sorry this is channeled uh, this the homeowner versus the property, but as the prior people came up and said, there is a due diligence period. Sort of you take it as it is, caveat enter, let the buyer beware. There's a due diligence period. They had they spent millions of dollars for the home property, I assume, on the ocean. They could have done their due diligence. They could have had seek proper counsel, proper inspectors, and done it at that time. They also indicated counsel, and I'll finish up briefly. Counsel also indicated that by building, allowing this variance to go, the variance to go through, it would remove four cars off the road. Okay, I don't know how there are currently four cars on the road currently. If they're staying in one statement, it's uninhabitable and can't live there, so there wouldn't be cars there currently. So how can be cars off the road when they're not living there? They're currently off the road. My client, who um, opposes this, which I understand, purchased their home recently and had a certain view of the ocean. They did their due diligence when they bought this home. I was their lawyer with regards to it. We looked at the various aspects of the home adjoining homeowners, the adjacent homeowners, and their view and so forth. I understand there is no law that gives someone a right to a view. I get that. However, there is a certain detrimental reliance my client has taken place when they said, okay, let's look at the surrounding homes. Some are built, some are not. And this is one of the homes with regards to that. One more second. I apologize. 
What counsel should have done in one respect to this own this owner is not try to get a variance with regards to what they're doing because their argument is that same it's a not a, it's not a lot of record. A not a lot of record. What they probably should have done is find a way to come to this board to see if there was a way to make this particular lot a lot of record and then made those arguments. But that's not what the issue before the review board today. And therefore for the legal reasons I just stated, I think the variance should be denied. Thank you for your time. Thank you. <laughs> Good morning, Lucy Brown, um, 23 Harvard Drive South. Um, my opinion about this is that it should not be granted. I agree with the uh, gentleman who just spoke, who told me he doesn't like lawyers. <laughs> you know, um, that the applicant made a good um, theory. He he has a good argument, but it's not a legal argument. It does not support granting the legal relief that he's seeking. And it's not a hardship because he can renovate, he can build on the footprint, keeping the wall, one wall or whatever it is. And I know the town would do whatever it needed to do to let this applicant build according to the grandfather doctrine about the structure, not about the law. And one other thing I want to say, this board is very important. And what you do is different from what the other municipal boards do. And that's because there is no appeal within the town structure <clears throat> from what you decide today. What you decide is consequential, it's meaningful, and it will create a precedent, as Al Nahr says. This cannot go, people cannot complain to the town commission. What happens is, and I'm gonna ask um, our lawyer, Chrissy, to update anything that I say, but, <laughs> The appeal from this board goes directly to circuit court. Having served on the circuit court here in Palm Beach County for 24 years, I have sat on many of these appellate panels that review municipal and county board decisions. The either side can appeal. But it's a very limited appeal. It's called certiorari, and I know you don't want to know everything about it, but there's only really three things that have to be proven. And basically, it goes on the record or on the appendix. And what I want to say is that our town staff, our building official, our town planner, who, our town attorney, whoever, um, had input into the town analysis, the staff analysis, did a great job. Because as a judge on those panels, you basically decide this on the papers. And 30 those, seconds. Those papers were um, complete, the analysis as to each of the five variances and each element of the requirement for variance was methodically done and it provides a good rationale. A reviewing court would probably find that a denial did not depart from the essential requirements of law, that any factual findings were based on substantial competent evidence, and the third thing requirement is procedural due process. In other words, the applicant got notice and an opportunity to respond. Sorry for going over. Thank you. Thank you. Any other public comment? Town clerk. Okay. Uh, dear staff, I am currently in the contract to purchase the property located at 6107 Ocean Boulevard, Ocean Beach, Florida, 33435, directly across the sub from the subject property. The main reason we are purchasing this lot and building a brand new home is because of the location, beach access, and the ocean views from the second floor. 
We have been fully approved by the Town of Ocean Ridge for a land development permit. This is a lengthy process which took lots of time and we followed the Town of Ocean Ridge building rules and codes and met all the requirements. We have done our due diligence prior to going into contract and hired the right architect, civil engineer, and landscape architect to make sure we met all the requirements without a variance. Now we have also submitted for permits to construct a brand new home and addressing the comments on the building permit application which is required before we can start construction. We are looking to start construction on our project in the next two to three months and we have parking for our construction which I believe this will be a big problem for the applicant and very concerning to us. I also believe the applicant did not do enough due diligence prior to purchasing and now asking for relief so he can build a much bigger home that does not fit the guidelines of Ocean Ridge which will require variance before you can submit the land development review. This letter serves notice that I do not support approving this variance application since this will dramatically impact the value of our property. We are looking to purchase this in a negative. We are looking to purchase in a negative way. If you have any questions, feel free to contact me, Stephen Petrucci. Um, this is from Jack Doyle, Pelican Cove, to whom may concern. I am a former resident of Malapian while living there. I served on both the Town Council and Architectural Commission. I also served in the capacity of Mayor Pro Tem. I moved to Ocean Ridge into the Pelican Cove neighborhood approximately 18 months ago. I frequently walk on the beaches and streets in the, old, in the area of Old Ocean Boulevard. It has come to my attention that Todd Pappas has purchased a property there and is attempting to secure a number of variances associated with that property. Given the ISO of, that property, of a property that currently exists, the intended upgrades to both the physical building and the yard as well, as Mr. Pappas' civic minus, I am strongly in favor of his application and request the aforementioned variances. Please feel free to contact me if you have any questions. This one is from Alan Waters, 6059 Old Ocean Boulevard. Dear members of the Board of Adjustment, I own a property abutting 6073 Old Ocean Boulevard to the south. Todd Pappas has applied for certain variances related to his proposed renovation of that property. In 2019, I considered purchasing 6073 Old Ocean Boulevard instead of the home I did purchase. I passed on 6073 Old Ocean Boulevard, but as it was and is, clearly in need of complete renovation. Mr. Pappas has shared his plans for 6073 Old Ocean Boulevard with me. I fully support his renovation plans including the proposed variances required to complete, complete the renovations. The renovations will increase property values, improve the tight vehicle parking situation, and significantly enhance the appearance of the neighborhood. Best regards. This one from Anthony and Katie now. Dear Board of Adjustment, my wife Katie and myself are homeowners in Ocean Ridge since 2015. We moved here from Palm Beach Island and we feel it is one of the best decisions we ever made. We love everything about Ocean Ridge. The police department is absolutely first rate, services are five star, and the direction of the government is fair to all. I'm writing to you on behalf of my longtime friend, Mr. Todd Pappas. We go on almost a daily basis to Old Ocean Boulevard and use the beach. Todd has bought one of those, oh, I'm sorry, Todd has bought one of those houses on the beach and is looking to improve and upgrade his existing residence that is there. I understand he needs a number of variances to move forward on this property. Todd is a man who does the right thing, and I'm sure his renovation will upgrade the property to your satisfaction. I hope you will grant these variances and continue to make our town a better place. Any questions or concerns, we are available. This is from Nicholas Limbo. Uh, dear sirs and madams, my wife and I own 6057 Old Ocean Boulevard, two doors south of 6073 Old Ocean Boulevard. I have reviewed the owner's plans for the proposed renovation. I want you to know that we are in support of this proposal as an enhancement to the street, the neighborhood, and the town of Ocean Ridge. It would also be an improvement in aesthetics and helpful to the difficult parking situation. From Mr. Robert Carlson, 38 Soar Way. Dear members of the Board of Adjustment, my name is Robert Carlson. My wife Patricia and I have been residents of the town of Ocean Ridge since 1987. We understand the Board of Adjustment is having a hearing on the variances. Mr. Pappas is applying for so that he can build a new home on his property. We support these variances. Parking on the street is very limited. The new home Mr. Pappas is proposing will have off-street guest parking, thus eliminating street congestion. In addition, the new proposed home will only add to the ambiance of the area. Um, my name is Ursolo uh, Baggio. My name is uh, Ursula Baggio, the owner of House at 6081 Old Ocean Boulevard on the north side of Mr. Pappas' residence. I am familiar with the variances he is applying for and think they should be approved. 
The house on this property is very old. The variance is well known to populist building new, beautiful home that will help us get cars off the road on Old Ocean Boulevard. The front guards. This is from Lynette Bosch. My name is Lynette Bosch, and I am, 18, I am a resident of the town of Ocean Ridge, residing at 6665 North Ocean Boulevard for the last 18 years. I understand the Board of Adjustments is having a hearing for the variances Mr. Pockets is applying for so that he can build a new home on his property like many other property owners have done in the town. I support these variances. Mr. Pockets' property at 6073 Old Ocean Boulevard, aka Inner Street, is on a very peaceful section of Old Ocean that I have utilized as part of my regular exercise running walking routine for the last 18 years. These variances will make it possible for Mr. Pockets to build a new home on his property, which in my opinion is much needed given the condition of the structure that exists there today. Having spent much time on this street as a pedestrian, there is currently very little room when a car needs to pass as many of the residents have their personal cars or guest cars parked on that street. The new home Mr. Pappas is proposing will make it so none of his personal cars or guest cars will need to be parked on the street. This will be a tremendous help from both a safety and traffic flow standpoint. Please support Mr. Pappas by approving these variances so that he can construct his new home. His efforts are much appreciated and our goal as a community not to only maintain but also make improvements to our beautiful Oceanside town that we cherish and our proud to call home. Kind of words. <clears throat> Ann Bennett, dear members of the Board of Adjustment, I am writing to you to request that you approve the variances submitted by Mr. Todd Pappas, the owner of the above-named property. Approval of variances will allow the redevelopment of the property in a manner that is compatible with home, the area, and will be beneficial to the entire neighborhood. Mr. Pappas, who has been a resident of Ocean Ridge for many years, purchased the property intending to make it his final residence. Since purchasing the property, Mr. Pappas has spent considerable time and effort to develop a plan to improve the property. He engaged Randall Stoff, a well-known architect with extensive experience in Ocean Ridge and the beach area. The resulting plan replaces an aging home with an attractive, a well-designed new home that is in keeping with size of other homes on the street. Additionally, the plan provides parking spaces for four cars that will alleviate parking problem on the very narrow one-way street. Had the property not been subdivided without town approval decades ago by a previous owner, Mr. Pappas' property would be considered grandfathered and could be rebuilt, as other homes with similar situations have been. <coughs> because the actions of the previous owner now present Mr. Pappas with a serious hardship, I would ask that you grant the request of variances. Sincerely. Last one. This is from Michael Fink, 6102 North Ocean Boulevard. Dear Board of Adjustment, I am the owner of the property located at 6102 North Ocean Boulevard in Ocean Ridge, which is located across the street from the property. I oppose the application of Todd Pappas requesting numerous variances from the Ocean Ridge Land Development Code in order to construct a new two-story residence on the property. The applicant seeks to build a much bigger house on the property than is permitted under existing Ocean Ridge rules and regulations by asking the board to waive such requirements for granting of variances. As I am confident the board is aware, variances and waivers from the code may only be granted when the application of a rule would create a substantial hardship under Florida law, a substantial hardship means a demonstrated economic, technological, legal, or other type of hardship to the person requesting the variance or waiver. There is no substantial hardship to the applicant in this case, as the property can currently be used for its intended purpose as a single-family residence and can be lawfully improved in compliance with the provisions of the code. The applicant's desire to demolish the existing structure on the property and build a much bigger new residence that does not comply with the provisions of the code is the ultimate example of a self-created hardship by the applicant. Furthermore, allowing the requested building to be built on such a small lot with reduced side, yard, side yards will adversely affect the harmony and essential character of the neighborhood and will reduce surrounding property values. The hardship criteria found in various provisions has a long, time, long line of cases and has been strictly construed by the courts. The criteria have been interpreted to mean three things. A, a mere economic disadvantage due to the owner's preference as to what he would like to do with the property is not sufficient to constitute a hardship entitling the owner to a variance. Burger King versus Metropolitan Dade County, 349 South District, 210, 3DCA, 1977. Metropolitan Dade County versus Reinig, 399 South District, 379, 3DCA, 1981. Nance Supra, Crossroads Lounge versus City of Miami. 
and B, neither purchase of property with zoning restrictions on it, no reliance that zoning will change, will constitute a hardship. Freeland versus Hollywood, 130, subject 306, BCA 1961, Ellen versus Miami, 813, subject 849. And C, if a purchaser buys land with conditions creating hard to pay hardship upon it, the owner is only entitled to such variance as his predecessor entitled was entitled. If the owner participated in an affirmative act which created the hardship, such as by purchasing only a substandard piece of larger lot, then the hardship should be ruled self-created. Gables versus Geary. The requirement that a variance hardship cannot be created is required by Florida case law in regards to Kellogg 197 F 3rd 116 121. Joseph versus Autry, <laughs> and Grounds of Grace versus Town of Palm Beach, Town of Palms Inlet versus Raincourt. For the reasons stated above, the board must reject the variances requested by the applicant, as there is no substantial hardship sustained by the applicant or the property by the imposition of the current Ocean Ridge Code. Unfortunately, I will be unable to attend the public hearing scheduled for September 21st, 2022, but this letter shall serve to memorialize my opposition to the application, and I reserve all my legal rights and remedies to appeal any decision made by the board in the event the board or Arona 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 any of the variances requested by the applicant. Sincerely, my That is it. You sure? <laughs> One more time. <laughs> Thank you. Staff will now make uh, final comments. Mr. Chairman, board members, Corey O'Gorman, Tom Planner, um, I would just point out that uh, contrary to a uh, statement by the, uh, the attorney uh, for the applicant, um, if the, the variances three, four, and five for um, a calculation of lot area, uh, coastal construction setback, and the side yard setback uh, would be applicable regardless of whether or not this was a lot of record. Thank you. Uh, the applicant will now make final comments. Uh, <clears throat> thank you, uh, Mr. Chair. Uh, typically, in the quasi judicial, there'd be an opportunity to cross examine. I don't know that I need to do that. I just, I just had a question uh, for staff if the board will indulge me. Just want to. Because I want to respond to a few things. Of course, it's part of their due process. They absolutely have the right to cross-examine any of our witnesses. So if he has questions of staff, likewise, we can certainly ask his witnesses questions. Thank you. Proceed. Uh, okay, uh, I'll try to make this quick. I'll try to respond to some of the comments and just sort of clarify a few things uh, because a lot was said about whether we comply and um, how others are complying. So, um, Corey, with regard to our neighbor to the west, they got a, a Bella Homes and they had a letter as well, and they said that they did their due diligence and that they comply and everything. Do they comply with code? The, theirs? Uh, the project was was approved at development plan review. Um, that was part of the original lot that was split in 1996 um, and would not have been considered a lot of record. That was not caught at the time um, of development plan review. Otherwise, it complies with all uh, all town codes, as is stated in the staff report. Okay, so just to clarify, staff approved it erroneously. It should not have been approved because it's not large enough and doesn't have a lot right off of it. It was a mistake. That's yeah. correct. And they're coming back for revision, so they would have to get the same variance. Sure. Sure. Yeah, just we, we, I just want to clarify because there is a, um, an element to these variance hearings, right, of, of who's doing the right thing and who's doing the wrong thing. And the suggestion is that we're seeking selective enforcement and that my client is seeking special privileges. When the reality is the opposite of that, right? There are countless examples in the town, including directly across the street, of things being done improperly, of people of selective enforcement, right? It, it is, I do not know why the town has not put a stop on their project because they've made a mistake in approving it, as acknowledged by Corey right now. Who knows why? They should make them come get a variance. That, that is absolutely a fact that I believe, although I don't want to speak for the town, I believe staff would probably agree with that, that there technically should have been approved. Similarly, to our north, excuse me, to our south, and I can show it if you can throw my screen back up. Six zero two nine old ocean. Um, okay, so you see the yellow line there. That is the coastal construction line. 
within three years of today, maybe four, the town approved everything you see right of that line. I don't know why, I don't have the history, I'm not here to point fingers, but that would be a selective enforcement scenario. My client is doing the opposite, which is coming to this board honestly saying there's an issue that he didn't create that's a real problem. We can't build anything on this lot if the home is not down in a hurricane, if the home is um, deemed uninhabitable, as we think is the case based on our architect, seeing that the literally the rebar is being exposed in the roof, the, the, the structure is falling apart, nothing can be built there. Nothing could be rebuilt. I believe staff would agree that if the home were to fall down today, nothing would be approved without a variance. I mean, that's, I think that's a fair thing to say, but I don't want to speak for staff. And so we're coming honestly not looking for selective enforcement, not, not looking for a special privilege. We're honestly asking for variances saying we need them for redevelopment of this site. And so I think that's a really important issue to clarify. Um, there are lots of homes, in particular the one on your screen, that are way larger than what my client is seeking approval for. There are lots of homes that, ex that go into the coastal construction line or have lot widths that are too small that were approved through other means, who knows. We're, we're proceeding this, uh, pursuing this in an honest way, saying, please give us these variances for this request to rebuild our home on this site because of a mistake that was not my client's mistake. And so this, in many respects, is a classic variance situation. There is a situation on the ground relative, relative to the property that was not created by my client. And if relief is not granted, my client will suffer substantial hardship. And so um, this is very different than what was presented as far as my client asking for special privileges. The other thing I would say is um, some of the neighbors who raised concern about view corridors, right? As was referenced, there's not a right to a view. And so for them to say they did their due diligence and we shouldn't get the variances because of their view, right? Those aren't your criteria. The criteria you're examining here today is whether we meet the, the criteria in your code for the variances not whether some other neighbor might have to get a variance because of that. And the last thing before closing is I'd just like to talk about precedent. So whenever we do these variances, right, I do a lot of these variances and someone will say something like, oh, there's gonna be a precedent established or be careful if you do this, there'll be the um, slippery slope of others asking for this. Um, I would bet money your town attorney would agree with me that there is no precedential effect to a variance. That every single variance because it is tied to property is unique. And so granting this variance will not open the floodgates to everyone in the town pursuing this sort of relief. You are bound by law to look at every variance individually. And as I said before, there are very few, if any, other lots in the town that have this weird situation of not being grandfathered in, of effectively being an unbuildable lot. And so the concern of this parade of horribles, of this future scenario of everyone just doing whatever they want, is not a realistic one. There are other mechanisms, and as evidenced by how many homes in the area have been rebuilt, that they're able to do it without seeking this relief. So thank you for this long response. Um, again, we just respectfully request approval of these variances because we have met the criteria. Um, thank you very much for your time. Um, Mr. Chair, I have a couple questions for Mr. Scott, just to clarify some things for the record. Is that the RA? Sure. Okay. Um, Mr. Scott, could you go back to that 6029? Do you know when that house was developed? So um, your shaft report says it was built in the 40s, let's say. That plan um, our architect worked on, and it was in 2018 or 19. So it was before the code was changed for some of the variances you're requesting here today. Not for the um, not for the lot width or the, the lot. Correct, the first right. two you're asking for. I don't know when the code was changed relative to some of those. Okay. Um, also, you mentioned other houses have been rebuilt um, similar to what the applicant is asking for. Um, besides the property directly across the street in 6029, what other properties do you have evidence of that have been rebuilt, say, since 2020? I, I would have to get back to you with the specific dates. I know that there's been a lot of redevelopment in the town of homes. I don't have the specific for 2020. I didn't. I wasn't able to get all those records from okay. the town prior to the hearing. Okay, but in this area where this property is at, we're really talking about 16 lots, right? Correct. That are in the Southern uh, uh, RSE designation, right? So there's 16 homes there, and and your property owner, your client is one of those owners. So what I'm looking at is specifically in this area. 
um, what properties have been redeveloped since 2020 consistent with the code or inconsistent with the code? Do you have any evidence of that? Since 2020, I'm sorry. I didn't, yes. This, this was the, the home on the screen is prior to, to 2020. Okay. okay. And, and then I know that uh, the fellow homes gentleman that's here is in for permits and was approved uh, earlier this year or something to that effect. And on, on this specific street, however, I didn't interrupt you. Sorry. Right. That's okay. And on his, the property directly across the street, the only variance was for lot width. I don't know. It, it just okay, that's, that's what Corey just no, testified. They, no, they didn't get a variance. Thank you. The only variance they would need is from the lot width. I don't, I don't, I just know that your shop report says it shouldn't have been approved. Okay. I, I don't know okay. what about it. I'm assuming it would be for for lot width among other things, but I haven't done a you know review of their plans other than staff saying it should have been approved. Right. Um, that's all. Okay. Um, and your application is seeking five variances. Correct. Which includes the lot width. Correct. Okay. I don't have anything further. Uh, if you give me a moment, I can ask my um, the architect if we have any of the other addresses that I'm referencing. I just want to see if he knows off the top of his head the 2020. Absolutely. What did she tell me about the code reference? Is she referring to the game on 2020? Sorry, we don't. I, it, he wouldn't feel comfortable saying which were done in post 2020. Um, relative to that, it would be we'd be guessing on dates, and so I'd rather not guess. We've worked on my client and the excuse me, the architect, I should say, to clarify. We've worked on quite a few homes in the past in the past few years, but we don't have the specific date post 2020. Okay. So I'd rather not. And no specific guess. address in this specific area. No, other than the ones I've referenced, there's not an, others on Old Ocean that I that I would say have um, you know, other than your staff report referenced something from 2005, but obviously that proceeded in 2020. Okay, that's, that's all I have. Thank you. Uh, do any of the members of the board have any questions for staff, applicant, or anyone who has spoken on this item? No. I, I have a question for the staff. Uh, I see the, the red. coastal hit, line. Hit the red. <laughs> no, I'm sorry. <laughs> You're here. But the question is, what would be the floor area ratio for this proposed project if you go with the coastal, 1979 coastal line? Or the, in other words, not going all the way as far as the whole lot is. Do you follow up on my question? What would be? Instead the, of the mean high water line? Yes. Instead of going to there, whatever is. Uh, the square footage of the lot versus what they are proposing to get. The what percentage is it extending to 25 percent? I think I think the answer to your question is is something that was addressed in the staff report. There's a table on page two. I, I think if I'm understanding your question correctly, okay, I, uh, the, the the way in which the uh, the floor area ratio and lot coverage is calculated if you look just at that portion of the lot that is west or landward of the 1979 coastal construction okay. line, like the floor area ratio would be 0.87 and the lot coverage would be 57.4. That's approximate because I, I don't have calculation exactly on the lot area for that portion of the lot that is landward of the coastal construction line. That's not so good question. 57.4. Just I'm, for the record, uh, Mr. Chair, I want to make sure with Mr. Scott here, um, uh, and for purposes of perfecting a record, um, we have the application from the applicant. Um, we have, I'm assuming, Mr. Scott, you want your PowerPoint presentation to be part of the record. Um, staff, the full report that you have, you would ask that that all be part of the record. Um, in case there's any further action from here, we can have it clear on the record what the record consists of. I don't know if I missed anything because we'll have a transcript, so that would cover all public comment, and I think that covers everything. 
Uh, yeah, I believe that's correct. Okay. Because we have the plans. Sure. We have the plans that were submitted with the variance in the backup, correct? Yeah. It's in the backup. Yes. Sure. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. I now declare this quasi-judicial hearing closed. We will now proceed with the comments and deliberation by the board. Bob, do you want to start? I, I don't have, I think I understand everything, so no comment. Okay. Yeah. Uh, one comment regarding the square footage. I, what is the current square footage of the property? I know this, all this information is in the package here. The current is about, what, 2,000 square foot? The, uh, uh, let me grab the table. I, I can say from here if it's... The, the house is about 4250 AC. That's, that's the proposal. Oh, the existing house? Yes. Uh, I have the footprint. Uh, yes, Mr. Rosselli, it's approximately 2,000 square feet, give or take, if it gets correct. And the proposed project is about 250% more, is that correct, say, 5,000 square foot? 4,200. Yeah, 42 is uh, under air, total oh, oh, overall oh, oh. is 5,000 square foot. Total, correct. Yeah. Okay. And, and another thing to keep in mind, the house is currently 10 foot from the setback on the front, 4.64 from the, on the one side, 11 foot on, so it's, most of the footprint is actually non-conforming and obviously you can't renovate this house anyway. It's, it would never, never be legal. It could never be insured. So, but I mean, I'll be happy to get you all those numbers. Okay. One other question I have to do with, which we talk about a lot about 6029. And that was a house that was built, but it was remodeled? Remodeled and an addition. You should come up too. Yeah. yeah, we did a renovation, which is there. You probably saw it as you drove by. And we did a, an addition, about a 20-foot addition, two-car garage, family room. They, we had it up on the plan. We had it on this, and it was approved in 2018. Right. Okay. And was there any variances? Mike no. They requested that there was no. None. And the question to you is, if you want to remodel this house right now, not tearing it down, would it be possible to do something similar to what it's, happened? It's, it's not even legal because there's a rule in the, in the okay. I say if. Well, first of all, only half the footprint actually meets the new setbacks. Most of the house is actually non-conforming setback-wise and not structurally even possible. Again, it's a 65-year-old foundation that wasn't built properly. No engineer would ever certify the use of renovating it. So, no, you can't unless you're going to, you know, unless there's some special condition where you say, okay, you can build in this footprint, which is 10 foot from the from the street, four foot from the other guy's property. I mean, I guess if that's the way you want us to go and we can completely tear out the foundation but build on the same footprint, but it's that's the most ridiculous thing. We're, we're actually pulling the house into current setbacks. And I, it, that's what I mean. I, it, these people throw out this pie in the sky, you can renovate it. It's it's not even legal to do it. A follow-up question. Could you go to 5,000 square foot if you you can do a renovation? Would you require any additional variance? Yes, because we'd be encroached. Uh, unless he tells you something different, every place I do business, you can't make an existing non-conforming structure more non-conforming. But if the town says they want us to go vertical on that footprint, and Todd has no choice to do it, I guess so. But that's going to block their view even more. I mean, this house is now 50 foot wide. The existing house is 70 
plus B, why? So sure, I guess if that's going to be the compromise, I can't speak for my client in that regard, but certainly I could have a discussion with them in that regard, sure. And that's something you can't do without even coming before the board or anybody? No, I, I would say we would, I would venture they'd come up with a bunch of variances. It's still not a legal lot. And, and that house is in the setbacks. But if that's what staff's gonna recommend, you know, we're, we're trying to get something that makes sense here. This is, we're not, I, I don't feel like we're asking for anything that every other, including 2018. I think um, the question was answered. Okay, thanks. thank you. Um, I, I have a number of comments overall. Um, my understanding is we're going to have to vote on each variance individually, right? That would, that would be best for the record, yes. Okay. Um, thank everybody for their presentation and, and the passion that you've demonstrated in, in your presentations. But I, I really think half of the presentations existed in the metaverse here. You know, if this house wasn't grandfathered, if this house was grandfathered, well, the reality is the house is not grandfathered. So let's deal in the reality, okay? It's an ungrandfathered house. We have to deal within the ordinances of the town of Ocean Ridge. It's the duty of this board to apply the minimal variance possible in each area. When you look at the uh, floor area ratios of the different homes, and as a uh, town attorney pointed out, there's, I think, 16 homes in this uh, 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 SAE. Um, 0.87 is tripled, double to triple everything else. That's not a minimal variance in my, my view. The other glaring issue, I think, is a complete disregard for the CCCL. I think it's an important ordinance. I think it regulates the structures and activities that can cause beach erosion, destabilize our dunes, damage upland properties, and interfere with the public access. That's why the CCL was formed in the first place. To disregard this line with new construction, I think it borders criminal. That's not even to discuss uh, our efforts to protect sea turtles and dune plants and everything else our community is, is here for. I think there's a little bit of environmentalist in all of us here in Ocean Ridge. That's why we live here, for either the beach, uh, the water, uh, et cetera. Or marine life. Um, I, I agree with um, Attorney Wheeling. Bloom, Bloom, close. That a mistake was made. Um, a mistake was made 25 years ago on this property, where they severed the east and west sides of the property. That's part of due diligence. It is not inherent on this board to correct wrongs in the past. We don't want to make any wrongs going forward. And um, certainly I, I don't want to cause financial hardship to any residents of Ocean Ridge. That's not the duty of the board. Financial hardship, in fact, is not even a line item for, for variance applications. That's my overall view. Um, there's specifics for each one of the variances that I'd like to um, entertain now. We'll now take a vote, final vote, on um, item, I think this was considered item number three, or the variances, but I'd like to consider the first variance, and that's uh, the, was it the width? The width. Minimum amount width. Minimum amount of width. Um, town clerk, can you call the roll? Um, 
we need a, a motion um, in a second. And ideally, the motion will address the criteria that you believe is either satisfied or the criteria that you believe is not satisfied if the motion is to deny. So I'll move. <laughs> <laughs> right, I'll, I'll make a motion a lot with. There is, despite I think what uh, our uh, the architect explained, I think there is an ability to renovate the existing home um, on on this property. It may not be the desired home, and it may not be the home that they, he's designed to be on this structure, but. Um, uh, because of that, um, I, I recommend that uh, variance on a lot with be denied. And is there a specific criteria you don't believe they've, they've met or um, in general, the criteria? Uh, in general. Okay. I, I, don't, I don't believe it's the, first of all, and I, I don't believe it's a minimal variance. I, and I certainly think the town or ordinances as they're spelled out is for specific purposes. Uh, I certainly don't want to see zero lot line homes in, in uh, Ocean Ridge. Um, and uh, that's the basis of my criteria. So we have a motion in a second. I second. Member Slow. No. Oh, I'm sorry. Don't, yeah, don't grant it. Okay. Denied. Denied. You're voting in favor of the motion to deny. Yes. Vice Chairman? Uh, deny. Voting in favor of the motion to deny. And Member Arsali? Uh, no. Uh, not to be denied. Not okay. one. You want to. Uh, you disagree with the motion? Uh, yes, the motion is to deny it, but I said no, so that's me. I want to go out. You want to? Okay. Okay. So under your rules, we need a unanimous decision uh, when there's only three members present. So that means the motion to deny as presented has failed. So um, your opportunity now is to discuss um, the criteria perhaps further, um, and then a new motion in second to be made um, until you can reach a unanimous decision. Is this public discussion? Yes, absolutely. Oh, could, could you explain to me why? What my reasoning is, it's not 87, 78, it's not 50, it's big enough to be able, especially if we have possibly other people that might come in with 78, and we think they're going to be granted. 78 is the width of the, the existing correct. lot. Instead of 100, it's 78. Well, that, that's, the phys, that's the physical boundaries of the lot. That's correct. So, but because of the structure being built there, they're encroaching on the easements, right. and you have no problem with the structure, they're not going to be. They're they're encroaching on the easements because of the reduction in the size of the lot. And what you're saying is that's fine with you. I think that's the reason I said this is fine with me. Then I'm going to have issues with the lots. But uh, if you want to redirect the motion, I wasn't sure that's going to require an anonymous. So. So let me uh, maybe perhaps provide some guidance on this process. And, and Mr. Scott may want to provide some input from a legal standpoint. Um, if just looking at this first variance on uh, mineral lot width, if the decision today were unanimous to deny it, right? They are then, they then have to wait a year before they can come back and apply. Now there is provisions in our code that would allow them to um, request that that denial be without prejudice that would allow them to come back in sooner than that year's time, perhaps to reapply for the same variance. 
this board decides whether the denial is with or without prejudice. The reason I bring that up, and I think what you're struggling with, is something that we struggled with in looking at this because the first two variances, both lot width and the total lot size, when you look at just those two together, and without looking at their plan for redevelopment, if there was perhaps a different plan that um, those were the only two variances they were seeking with a different plan, there may be a better argument in totality for granting theirs. And I say maybe, not necessarily, but maybe. The problem is we need to vote on each variance because we need to have a clear record on each variance. But what you can separate is the totality of the application. And so even if the only variance they had to apply for minimum lot width, they can't with what the plan is that they've proposed. Because it will not work if the only variance they get is the minimum lot width. So just so you understand, now knowing that you know this is a unique circumstance with these 16 other properties, what you can do is you can, if you decide to deny, deny it without prejudice and allow them to perhaps rework their plan and come in with a plan that perhaps they don't have to ask for all these variances, perhaps a lesser variance, or if there's a desire to do something else for a text amendment, that's a different complete story. So I just want to explain that legal, and I, I asked Mr. Scott to step up because I don't testify, I'm just, I'm just the attorney, um, and Mr. Scott, if I said anything that legally you disagree with, or perhaps if you have thoughts on a denial without prejudice, so perhaps that we can find something, another way to address perhaps this area. Correct me if I'm wrong. If there was a hurricane, blew the house away, they could rebuild the house or replicate the old house without any problems. No, technically, and that's the whole the, the whole issue with this lot is that it's not grandfathered in. Mm. If this was grandfathered in, the scenario that you explained would be true. It's not grandfathered in. So what that means is they've got to comply with everything that's currently existing in our code. So that's why they appropriately applied for five variances. That's why there's so many of them. Um, but yes, what, you're, what you've just explained as a scenario of could they come back with essentially the same square footage, the same type of, that may be, but that would be a different, completely different application than what's before the board today. But they do have that option. Right, and if, again, as I mentioned, under our code, if you deny without prejudice, that would give them the ability to come back in to ask for a variance on this property, otherwise they have to wait a year before they would be able to reapply. Can, can, can I suggest maybe we go through two through five before we come back to the one? Absolutely. Uh, can I just respond? Because you said a lot there that's kind of a lot going on. A couple things um, to clarify. If variances one and two are granted, it makes the lot a buildable lot. If the other three are denied, it means my client can't build the plans in your backup. So variances one and two allow something to be rebuilt there in the hurricane scenario. Um, we, of course, would respect if the, uh, excuse me, request that if the board decides to deny all the variances, that it would do it without prejudice to help us with this whole year issue. But we also just want to just make sure that, because your, your comment about the, the hurricane is a really important one. If variances one and two are, are granted, it makes the lot buildable, not in the coastal construction line, have to comply with all code, but right now, Nothing can be rebuilt there. Only small renovations of walls, roofs, that we've said is impossible, but understand that you disagree. I just wanted to clarify that and also emphasize that if, it, if the board chooses to deny all of them, it'd be without prejudice, just give an opportunity for my client to come back to something, right? As opposed to rendering them with no options. Thank you. Yeah, and, and I agree with what he's saying. The only problem is, is you have the plan in front of you. So if you grant the variances, you're granting the variance based on the plan that's here, and that creates an inconsistency on in record. I'm ready to move the second. I will move, make a motion to deny the number two variance minimum lot area. Second. 
And is there, is there a particular criteria that you believe it doesn't satisfy under the criteria to grant the variance? Yes, that's a kind of small compared to everything else. And that's basically why I say that the, 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 the minimum broad area is uh, 20,000. And I, it should stay the same for any new project. So I, I'm sorry, I'm a little confused. Are you moving to deny the to grant? Deny it, and, and, and is it because the size of it, you believe it's buildable in its current size? Uh, no, that's that's why I'm denying it because it's not. It could be a model, but it cannot be a rebuilt. Okay, so um, in your opinion. Um, have they shown a hardship based on the minimum lot area to build what they have in their application backup? They have not. Okay, so is your motion then based on a, that they haven't satisfied the hardship criteria That's to correct. establish this variance? That's correct. And so your motion is that they fail to establish a hardship for this variance? They have not, but that's a motion to deny it. Okay, thank you. And okay. Bob, you seconded? I did. Okay. Okay. Member Slow? Uh, I agree with the motion to deny. Vice Chair Hendon? Deny. And Member Asabi? Deny. Christy? Perhaps you could point to them the page in the packet where the criteria that they need to use is. It yes, might I make believe, it um, easier for them to page. make their motions. Page four. Page four of the backup has all of the variance criteria. Is it four or is it? Well, it's throughout the packet. Yes. Page eight, page four, page six. For each variance. Yeah. I feel very bad for this topic, but or it has to do with duty. So I think we're on the third variance, um, the area taken into consideration um, for determining lot size and usable land area. Yes, I, um, I move that the um, variance be denied. I don't think uh, any special circumstances exist with this person, with this property to cross the um, Coastal construction control line. Um, it's certainly um, determined by the house proposed to be placed on this property. I second that. Member Slope? Denied. Member Asali? Denied. And Mr. Hendon? Denied. To tie into that, the um, variance number four was construction seaward of the coastal control line. I think this is uh, taken in with variance number three, uh, area taken into consideration for determining the size of the usable land. Uh, and as such, um, since I proposed a denial of three, I uh, proposed a denial of four, uh, that no special circumstances exist. And to maintain uh, the Coastal con construction control line established in 1979, and all buildings should be westward of that line. I move second. 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 Member Slope? Denied. Member Arsali? Denied. And Vice Chair Denied. <coughs> Variance number five, uh, the north side setback. Um, I think the new construction should be able to comply with a lot with requirements. 
Um, this uh, proposed plan uh, does not, I don't think any special circumstances exist because it is new construction and as such, I move for denial of variance. Second. Member Asali? Denied. Member Lynch? Denied. Member Slow? Denied. Raise your hand. Denied. Okay. That takes us back to the first variance. Um, as you recall, we had a motion and second that failed uh, to reach unanimous decisions. So we need to go back to variance number one. Variance number one is a minimal lot width. Um, uh, I don't believe the standard is not met. Uh, discussion was had. Um, can I make a motion to deny with um, pre what was without, it? Prejudice. without prejudice? Yeah. Second. Member Arsali? Deny with, without prejudice. Deny. Yes, deny. Member Slow? Deny. And Vice Chairman? And deny without prejudice. Did, did you, did you mean for them to do? The other ones would have prejudice? Yeah, let's go back and just clarify for the record. Um, if we could get a just another um, vote on whether the denials for variance two, three, four, and five, are those also without prejudice or were those with prejudice? With prejudice. I move that, that two, three, and four with uh, with prejudice. Two, three, four, and five? Two, three, four, and five. But just, just so we're clear, that would that means there was no reason whatsoever to group to do deny one without prejudice. Just it, it gives us nothing more. So if we deny two with prejudice, it allows the owner to redo plans in order to make this a buildable lot. Correct. Correct. So if and I think that's what Mr. Scott. No, was it doesn't. It doesn't. Well, this is what Mr. Scott is saying on the one hand. If you deny them all but only number one is without prejudice then they can only come back to address a variance within on, a year within a year for that one um the a point i believe and correct me if i'm wrong mr scott is what he's saying is that if number two is with prejudice then they would have to wait a year to come back to reapply for number two um and so i think that's what you were saying yes what i'm saying is if variances one and two are denied without prejudice. My client can potentially, theoretically, come up with a plan to rebuild a home that otherwise meets code. If you grant, if you deny to with prejudice, nothing can happen for a year other than minor renovations. And so on completely respect the decision the board has made, we would just respectfully beg that you make two without prejudice just to let us come back potentially and ask for something different, a whole new plan. That's that, that's that's what I'm. And then that's a he's making an excellent point because it would be based on the new application they bring forward because your decision here today is based on what's before you, which is the plan for this house as currently designed. There's no reason to make one without prejudice if you're not going to make two. Well. But you made two the minimum lot area based on uh, your definition of uh, mean high water line versus coastal construction line. No, no, it's it's, it, it's a percentage, and your percentage was two to three times what other lots are in that area. That's three. Three is relative to that. Two is just the just boundaries of the lot. The total lot size. Which is never going to change for, based on I the plan. I yeah. stand for it. It's, I, no, it's very confusing. So <laughs> I, I have no problem trying to clarify things. I just, if there is any inclination to let my client come beg for something that needs code better, we need to one and two to be without prejudice. Uh, I agree. Okay, uh, your client has options, and that's important. Our denial does not deny them any options. So, Bob, you want to make a, a motion to make variance to denial with prejudice? I without, move, without. without prejudice, I'm sorry. I move that we deny uh, option two without prejudice. Thank you very much. I'll Thank second you. that. Number Slow? Denied. Member Lynch? Denied. Member Slow? Denied. Member Slow? Denied. Member Lynch? Denied. 
Denied. Without prejudice. Without prejudice. Member Arcelli? Denied without prejudice. Vice Chair Hendon? Denied without prejudice. Okay. So, thank you. Adjourn. <laughs>